Hello, Andrea Trowski here with Dental Well Tutoring. So I just had a session with my students actually, and they made a great point. So everybody's asking me to kind of teach them how to read a multiple choice, I guess, question. So a multiple choice test, a multiple choice exam, and how to pick apart the key points in the questions. Because if you can't do that, then, then you can't really answer the, the question properly, right? But it takes practice. It really, really does. So in this video today, I'll kind of teach you guys how to do that. Um, but the best thing that I can say is that it takes practice and do not expect to be a pro at mock exam questions or case studies right away because it takes practice. I was a student once too and you know things are just so overwhelming because you have to learn things, you have to remember things, you have to know 20 different things, 30 different things on one test. In the next class, you have to know everything else. But, and you might be thinking that short answers would be a lot easier to study for and a lot easier to answer, right? But that's not always the case. But with multiple choice questions, they become hard because of all of the answers that they provide for you. So if you think about it, if you cover up the answers, then that may make multiple choice easier for you to answer. So I've said this to my students too, but you need to figure out how you read multiple choice questions and what's easier for you. Myself, when I was a student, I, I would actually cover up the answer. So I would read the multiple choice question, but cover up the answers that were available. And then I would think of the answer in my head first and then uncover the answers and pick the best one that I was thinking of in my head. Because when I looked at all of the answers, I became quickly overwhelmed and thought to myself, okay, I thought I knew the answer, but now I'm seeing four answers that sound correct. And that's the thing about these questions, these tests, these exams, is two answers are always correct, you guys. The other two make no sense or they're just obviously the wrong answer, but you had to pick the most correct. So you might be wondering, well, how do I pick the most correct? that comes from reading the question. So let me teach you guys that for a second. So how do you pick the most correct answer? So let's use a case study actually as an example because it's, it's a little bit easier to understand and to explain. If you can do case studies, you can do multiple choice questions and answers because case studies are multiple choice questions and answers all within the case study, right? So let me teach you guys something. So let's read the question here. So Catherine mentions to you she has sensitive teeth to all things cold, but she's used to it. She uses Sensodyne toothpaste. Upon examination, you, you, you notice generalized wear on the teeth, localized areas of recession, many silver fillings, and decreased saliva production. If that's not overwhelming to you, then you must be amazing. Okay, even me reading that, I'm thinking, wow, that's a lot of information. So you have to now break it down. This will probably take you 10 minutes to break it down. But once you get the hang of it, it will just take you a couple seconds. So look at everything. So Catherine mentions to you that she has sensitive teeth. That's a, that's a keyword right there. And then you have to think, well, what type of sensitivity? to all things cold, because she could have hot sensitivity, she could have pressure sensitivity, she could have just um, generalized aching teeth, but it's specific to cold. She uses Sensodyne toothpaste, because when a patient tells me that they have cold sensitive teeth, my first question is, do you use Sensodyne toothpaste? Because it helps with cold sensitivity. So the fact that she's telling you that she uses Sensodyne toothpaste means that that's a good thing and that should help with the cold sensitivity, right? Upon examination, you notice, so these are things that you notice. Where on the teeth, you noticed localized areas of recession and many silver fillings, there's more, and decreased salivary production. So you need to look at all of these here. So generalized means everywhere. So, so she has generalized wear on the teeth, so a lot of wear. Localized areas of recession means in some areas she has areas of recession. Many silver fillings and decreased um, saliva production. So all of these things you have to look at. Now you don't know the key points yet until you read the answers. But right now you can easily pick apart the key points in the question. But as you notice you guys, I pretty much highlighted everything, right? So you might be saying, well, how are those the key points if everything's highlighted? The key points come, into hand, come in handy when you start reading the, the answers available. 
So let me kind of tell, um, show you guys what I'm talking about. So the next slide here. So what should concern you about low salivary production? So what I would do is not look at the answer. So if I was a student, I would cover up the answers and think to myself, okay? So what should concern you about the low salivary production? So from what I know from the question, from the case study, what should concern me? So think to yourself, okay, low salivary production, what does that mean? It means they have limited saliva. What does that mean? Take it a step further. What does limited saliva do? It could increase the risk of cavities. It can make the teeth more sensitive. Um, you know, like those are just the main things. Um, the more saliva you have, the better. So those are kind of the main things that concern me about low salivary production. So I didn't even look at the answers yet because this is how I would study as a student. So then when I'm looking at the answers, so A, the silver fillings, B, increased caries risk, C, the patient sensitive teeth, or D, the generalized wear on, on the teeth. So again, look at the question. The key word is low salivary production. What does that have to do with the answers? Uh, the silver fillings, does that have to do with low salivary production? Not really. Increased caries risk? Well, I did think that in my head earlier. The patient sensitive teeth, that could have something to do with it, or the wear on the teeth. So you can already see the two answers that are not correct. That would be the silver fillings and the generalized wear because it has nothing to do with low salivary production. So now we're looking at increased caries risk and the patient sensitive teeth. What's the best answer? Hmm? Think about it. It is increased caries risk. And I had thought that in my head already. But you may not be like me. You may need to look at all of the answers to properly determine. So I know some students that they look at the question and then they look at the answers and then they look at each answer and say, so for A, they would look at A and say, okay, so the silver fillings, that has nothing to do with salivary production. So I know that that's not right. And then they say increased caries risk. Okay, that does have to do with low salivary production. C, the patient sensitive teeth. Okay, that could have something to do with it, but they're cold sensitive. That's more about the sensitive teeth. Is her telling us that she's cold sensitive and that she's a sensitive? Not really the low salivary production. Because if you have low salivary production, it doesn't mean that you have sensitive teeth and vice versa. It could, but not always. Her telling you that she has cold sensitive teeth, that has to do with sensitive teeth. So C isn't really the best answer, but it is correct. D, the generalized wear on the teeth. That has nothing to do with low salivary production. So then you can pick, okay, so increased caries risk, the patient sensitive teeth. I'm gonna go with increased um, caries risk. And then that's the answer. So figure out what method is the best for you. And that will help you answer multiple choice questions and case studies. It takes practice. And if you, if you guys need help with that, let me know. Um, for my um, Dental L members, we now have a session every Sunday. So I hop on live um, Sunday evenings and we have an hour where we talk about case studies every single Sunday. And that's their time to ask me questions. We talk about whatever they want to talk about. It is, it is so helpful. So if you guys are saying that you need help with case studies, now is the time to become a Dental L member because I can certainly help you. So good luck and I will see you guys in the next video.